Hi everyone, welcome back. Now this is a video for Google, it's for XFlyer. Um, and what I plan on doing through it is going through and redoing a series of videos that were done by TechWinder. Um, they're a great series of videos for XFlyer. However, they were done for an older version and so a lot of things have changed in recent versions and so I'm just updating them through this, but you can always check out his videos to see the original ones. I'll keep a link in the description. Um, so first off, if you want to do XFlyer, you're going to need to install it. So I'll type in XFlyer 5. And you want to go to the official one, don't go to SourceForge, you can find it fine right here. Now what is XFlyer? Well, it's a code that can help you figure out the aerodynamics, so lift, drag, pitching moment, stability, um, separation, whatever you want um, about different airfoils and different um, plane geometries. So it's very, very valuable if you're working in aerodynamics, especially if you're doing something with, um, you know, fixed wing aircraft. Less important if you're going into drones. Still could be important there, but less important. Now, once you get to XFlyer 5's main page, you can go to Downloads. And then you want to download the latest version. Takes a few seconds to get there. Once you get there, what it's going to give you is it's going to give you a zip file, which will look something like this. You'll want to extract that zip file. There's no need to do any installation. And you want to put that someplace where it's not going to get deleted. So don't leave it in downloads. Put it in like your documents or some other place where you can put those kind of files. And then you're going to be running it by clicking on the XFlyer 5 application. So once you have it installed, click on it. It looks something like this. Now, this by itself doesn't really seem like that much, but it can build into quite a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, go to module, we're going to go to XFoil Direct Analysis. Other videos will cover um, like direct foil design and XFoil Inverse Design, or Wing and Plane Design. For now, XFoil Direct Analysis. This is a code, which is actually like a man script kind of code, um, that is meant for analyzing airfoils. It's very, very powerful. It's very, very well done. However, XFoil by itself is not that easy to use, and it doesn't have the best GUI. So XFlyer just makes it a lot easier. You'll start off in the polar view. Yours will probably look like this. And actually, it won't quite look like that. I need to change that back to alpha. There we go. It will look like that. And we're going to switch it to the airfoil view look like this. Now, as a matter of just, you know, sanity, you probably are going to want to change some colors and some fonts. So before we go any further into the program, I want to show you how to do that. So first off, for your overall interface, this tree over here, the fonts are absolutely minuscule when it runs it. So you probably want to go to Options, to Preferences, Display Options, and you can change your tree font and your tooltip font. I would pick a larger font. I think it defaults to four. I chose nine, that's been working really well for me. Then for your graphs, oh, you can right click it, and then you can go to, let's see here. Oh, I went the wrong one. Graphs, all graph settings, right here. You wanna to go to all graph settings, and then once again, you're going to wanna to change colors. Go to fonts and background. Um, I made my background white because the text defaults to black, and that makes it easier on me because if you have a black background and it's black text, you can't actually see anything. Um, beyond that, you can also change your fonts for the title and for the labels. It does make it a lot simpler to see things if you do that. Okay, now this is all about airfoil analysis. If it's airfoil analysis, I probably need to have an airfoil. So let's get an airfoil. So where do I get those? You can either load them in online, which I'll show you um, in a later video, for now, we're going to go to Analysis, I'm sorry, Design, and we can pick up a NACA airfoil. So it can already build NACA airfoils for you. I'm going to make it the 2412. We use that a lot in my class. And we'll click OK. For some strange reason, it is just choosing to default to this massively zoomed out airfoil. Don't quite know why yet. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with it. But as you can see, you can zoom in and out using your mouse you can also drag it around if you click to get it in position. And you can do the same thing for your coefficient of pressure graph. Now, after you have created this airfoil, um, you might want to be looking and seeing how the panels are distributed. 
So there's various ways you can do that. First off, you can just click on the airfoil in your tree over here. You can go to symbols and you can then put the dots on it. I usually keep the dots off, but it's helpful to see how it's being panelized. Now, the big important detail for panels is you want to have more panels wherever the geometry is changing quickly and less panels where it's changing slowly. And this looks fine. However, no matter how you make your airfoil, whether you use its built-in code to build a NAC airfoil, whether you load it in from um, the internet, you want to make sure you re-panelize your airfoil. Because XFlyer is very good about pointing and putting the panels where they need to be. So I'm going to use this function right here, refine globally. You can hit F3 if you want to jump to it, but I want to show you where it is. So that's under design and then refine globally. So currently I have 99 panels. I usually choose things between 100 and 150. You can choose more, it's just going to make it a lot harder on XFlyer the more panels you have. And everything else I can leave as the defaults. Now I want you to look right here at the front surface of this airfoil. I hit apply. What you might realize is that there's a lot more panels here on the front than there were beforehand. And this is not just me adding one panel here. This is also that it bunched the panels more on the front where the geometry is changing more quickly. So XFlyer was saying that we need more panels there to have a good analysis. So I click OK. And when you do that, it's going to say, hey, do you want to change the foil's name? I'm going to say, keep the foil's name the same, but click Overwrite. So the geometry is now gone. Now, I don't want to keep on seeing these dots, so I'm going to remove those by clicking on this, going to Symbols, and removing it. As a note, you can also change the color, the width, and the style of your line if you wish. So this is about analyzing airfoils. I have an airfoil. Now let's do an analysis. How do I do an analysis? Well, I go to Analysis. And I'm going to define an analysis. There are various different types. We're going to focus on Type 1. And Type 1, you keep your Reynolds number constant, and you vary your angle of attack or your coefficient of lift. Um, to find out the performance. As a note, I want to keep my triplication at the end. As for what this the triplication is all about, we'll talk about that in a later video. So let's look at some of the details here. First off, a lot of this is already just pulled in. So the density of air is just standard as is my viscosity. Um, I have my Reynolds number right here, which is 100,000, which seems fine for what we're doing. You would want to set that to whatever your Reynolds number would be for your aircraft when it's flying. Um, Mach number we're going to leave is zero for now. We're not worrying about that. Um, down here is your transition settings. This is telling it when to transition from lim laminar to turbulent. Um, I'll just go ahead and tell you, this triple location is saying where along the airfoil did you put in something to make it go from laminar to turbulent. And this number determines how it figures it out naturally. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of this now, but I'll do it in a later video for what NCRIT stands for and how you might change that. So we're going to do the type 1 analysis. Um, type 2 and type 4 you typically do for like full wing designs, though type 4 also works fine for just an airfoil. And the different types and what they involve, that's in the documentation. I'll let you check that on your own time. So I click OK and nothing happens. What you will notice is that in the tree you'll see my analysis is now there. And also on the right you'll notice that this has now lit up and I can actually select it. Now I don't want to just do one analysis. I want to do a range of um, angles of attack. I want to go from 0 to 10 in steps of 0.5. Make sure that all of these are selected and then click Analyze. It's going to pop up everything there and also for some reason with this version it's not doing the automatic changing of colors which is a little bit frustrating, but it doesn't matter too much because usually I'm just going to look at one at a time. Now, the first thing you want to check to make sure that everything's going fine is to make sure that all the numbers that should be here are here. So if you see that it terminated at like, you know, 8, then it means it wasn't able to converge. You'll need a smaller step size. Mine's fine. I see it all the way to the end, so it seems like it's okay. I'm going to hide this because it's just too much information for me for the moment. Now I've gone from 0 to 10, I'm also going to go from 0 to negative 6. And the great thing is it will just add it in place. I don't have to worry about ordering it. It'll be all nice and ordered. I hit run, and it's done. And once again, I'm checking. It went all the way to negative 6. I'm not seeing really quickly any missing values. So I have it. 
Now I'm going to pick out one of these. I'm going to pick out five degree angle of attack. I'm going to show it on the graph. Now look at my airfoil. First thing you should notice is that my airfoil will be drawn at the correct angle of attack. But there's a lot more information that's available to you for your airfoil. For example, if I click on pressure, it will show me the pressure distribution over the airfoil as vectors. You can also see there is a sharp change right here about 60% along of the cord. Now what's causing that sharp change? Because I have a sudden drop in my coefficient of pressure. Well, let's look and see. I have another button I can click here, which is displacement thickness. And when I click that, what you can see is that my boundary layer is now shown. And what it looks like is that about 60% of the cord, this is where the code said my airflow would naturally go from laminar to turbulent. And when you go from laminar to turbulent, you do have a drop in your coefficient of pressure, especially since it was already staying attached. Now let's check a higher angle of attack here. I'm going to go up to 8. As I note, when I click on this one um, for a higher angle of attack, let's go to 10. Ah, it's still not really um, separating all that much, but I can see it a bit here. Um, the graph will not change unless you tell it to. The airflow will automatically change when you click on it. So in this case, you can see I have that transition much earlier with a higher angle of attack. I do see some separation beginning here. If I was to go to 15, I would probably see it begin to fully separate. So why don't we check that out? We'll go from 0 to 15. As a note, I'm always starting at 0 because it's easier for it to converge if you go from 0 rather than going from a different number. I did it. And it was able to make it all the way to 15. Doesn't mean it's necessarily realistic. As you can see, that boundary layer is absolutely crazy. There's massive amount of separation. So more likely, I would say probably around 14 and a half, I wouldn't be trusting it very much more than that. But you can see that as I get to higher angle of attack, my boundary layer is beginning to detach. And so my coefficient of pressure is also dropping dramatically. I'm getting a lot less lift because of that. A lot less lift. Let's look at my pressure distribution. You can also see that this drops down very, very quickly. And I have a very low amount of lift at this um, angle of attack. So boundary layer separation is an issue. So that's all I want to show you this time. Um, next time we're going to be really jumping into our polar plots on this side. Actually, I probably should show you the polar plots right now. So we'll do that too. So polar plots are showing you all that coefficient lift data, but now as a function of angle of attack. And when you go over here, you're not going to see anything to begin with. It always defaults to being off. And so what you can do is you can right click and you can say show all polars. Um, I can also, if I want to, just click here and then make it show up if I want to by clicking that. That's the second way to do it. Now, this gives me all my data so I can see how my coefficient lift changes as a function of angle of attack, my drag, and various other properties too. And so we can see that we're reaching stall somewhere around like 12 degrees, 12, 13 degrees right here um, before it begins to really drop off my lift. And also, we can see that our drag is dramatically increasing as we separate, begin to separate. So we're starting to separate really significantly, probably somewhere around that 10 degree mark. And you can see that it just jumps up crazily because the more separation I have, the more pressure drag I have. At lower angles of attack, um, the only thing that's really affecting our drag at that point is turbulence. So am I going from my lambda to a turbulent boundary layer? Where is that happening and how much skin friction drag am I having? along with a little bit of pressure drag. Now, if you want to figure out a particular value, you just need to click on it. So if I click on a particular angle of attack, you'll see a red dot, and it's saying that's the value that you're clicking at. So I want to find the max, I can say, click on it, and I'll find that, okay, it's from 12 and a half. I can also, if I want to, just like zoom in here and find the values. But with that, I have all my data on the polar plots. I have my data on my, whoop, my airfoil, it all appear again, airfoil plot. If I wanted to save this, I could also right click and save the view to an image file um, to use into a, you know, some sort of report or the um, diagram. So that's it for this time. I hope this helps you and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.